Now, I don't know how I can phrase this video other than it's basically a vlog. Um, I'm going to have some announcements at the end, um, but yeah, this is about VidCon, so I don't know how much it's applicable to everyone. But I will say, I went to VidCon on an American Historical Association slash Mellon grant, so I need to talk about it as part of that grant. Hey, Cypher here, and I just came back from VidCon, and I've got to say, it was a hell of a time. I got to meet with a bunch of people I have been talking to and collaborating with for years now. People like the folks behind Alliterative, Step Back History, Knowing Better, Grant Hurst, Canubis, Soliloquy, a bunch of folks that I have been talking to on and off for years now. It was quite a get together, and the best part of it actually happened before VidCon itself started. We had a kind of independent convention right beforehand called EduCon. This was something that was originally organized by a group that I'm a member of called We Create EDU. But eventually, Google stepped in and started funding the conference as an actual conference rather than just an informal get-together. And this time, it was huge. I mean, so much that there was, you know, merch. Um, but it was also kind of amazing because it wasn't just we create edu it was pretty much everyone you can name who's an educator on youtube so i met with a lot of folks who have channels that are monstrously larger than this one such as um vsauce hank and john green um just a bunch of people that i never thought i would even meet in person and educon was a real conference before VidCon. So we all gathered together to talk about things relating to educational content on YouTube and have special sessions oriented around special topics. A lot of YouTube representatives and executives were there to take notes about what we were talking about too, so we were really being heard. And of course, it's an excuse to network and find out about all of this other content that's out there that, you know, you kind of get pushed into your one little niche and don't see the larger picture. So EduCon was awesome. And VidCon was pretty fun too. It just can't compare to EduCon. <laughs> I did get to go and see some special panels from folks that really taught me a lot. I might be moving my release schedule because of one of these things, and I might also be changing the way I write scripts a little bit. And there were some folks hanging around VidCon that weren't at EduCon, such as uh, Ollie from Philosophy Tube, who we hung out with for like a day and a half out of the three days. Um, he actually ended up getting in one of my shots that I was just trying to get B-roll. <laughs> Say hi to Ollie. <laughs> but really, VidCon is not about the sessions. Even though you can get a lot from them, the real purpose of it is to meet up with people that you normally wouldn't meet up. It's a purpose-built place to gather all of these YouTubers together. The one problem with that is that it does invite the community in, and then it becomes a bit of a YouTuber petting zoo downstairs. Luckily, they divide it up so that, you know, people who are in the community track have, like, red badges, whereas creators have uh, these badges, and so on and so forth. There's other tracks. And now that Viacom has taken over, they're really trying to keep it from uh, becoming a mess like last year. And I think they did a pretty good job. For instance, they introduced this thing where you have a badge that you have to hit posts as you're coming in to check in. And this thing is made in a way so that they strap it onto your wrist and you really can't take it off. It's in a cinch thing so that it's too tight to get off and they literally make you shower with this thing on and the only way to get it off is to cut it off as you can tell it's cut but yeah viacom stopped things like the paul brothers incident uh last time or any of that kind of stuff i at least that i know of 
So yeah, all the craziness that you've heard about VidCon was pretty supplemented this time. You know, there was large crowds and all that, that's unavoidable, but they were well under control. Which also meant the We Create EDU group was able to gather and stay together and we'd go out to get food and drinks after the sessions and all that. And it was a rollicking time. But the one great takeaway from all of this is that this channel really needs to be more active in the YouTube community. And I feel like I haven't been enough. I've done a few collaborations before, but this is kind of enlightening over my position in the community and how the community um, can be a great benefit to the channel. And to you guys, since hopefully you guys subscribe to other channels and we all build off of each other and work with each other to uh, build to a better and better product. So I will say it was definitely worth going despite the hardship of going there because I actually took a motorcycle all the way from Las Vegas to Anaheim and had to take my Jeep from New Mexico to Las Vegas. So I had a lot of weight and had to fight a lot of wind and was just incredibly tired from all of it. And now for something completely different. I have a few announcements to make. First, I'm in Las Vegas. I have stuff to edit all with me, but I'm still kind of on a break. So don't expect weekly episodes until mid-July, but you can still expect a bit of a trickle in between. And if you are a $5 patron or higher, be sure to check out the Discord server because there are a lot of videos already up and ready to go, but I've got to release them steadily so that I have stuff to release while I'm going through my PhD. Now speaking of that need to make a lot of content. I have a few ideas to propose to you guys and I'd like you guys to uh, comment down below of what you think. First, I have an idea of doing basically book reviews. Obviously, I read a lot and I'd like to kind of convey what I like and dislike about particular books I use on this channel or just in my regular history work. If you do think that's a good idea, be sure to comment what books you'd like me to review because, um, especially if I've used them on the channel before, but I am going to probably focus a lot on uh, Western history because that's my specialty. I do kind of use this channel to bounce ideas off of, same in the other direction where I'm using classes to bounce ideas off of. And so my history work and the channel have kind of a symbiotic relationship because of that. But for instance, I did an episode a long time ago about the etymology of filibustering, then I started working on a paper, and then I did a bunch of research for that paper that ended up making me do the whole Walker episode, and I took the feedback and all the work I put into that to turn it into a paper for a Borderlands class that I had originally started researching for. So you can see it literally bounces off of each other. And trust me, even though on this channel I tend to be uh, fairly uncritical of the books I read, I am not uncritical of them. And um, so there's always some sort of uh, drawback or something to these books, and it's pretty important to talk about those. But you don't really get to when you're using those as evidence. So that could be a lot of fun, and a quick way to put out content, the only problem is I just couldn't really do any pictures. It would just be basically me talking. And if it's anything from the channel, it's probably digital, which means that I wouldn't even have a book to wave around. Unless I was waving around this thing, but <laughs> that's not really the same thing. The second idea that I wanted to propose to you guys is I was thinking about taking those reality sections from various based on the true stories and making them into independent episodes. For instance, the Darkest Hour episode has basically a biography of Churchill that could be its own independent thing. 
it would be pretty lazy of me to just cut it out. I'd have to do a little bit of re-editing just to not feel like I'm being completely lazy, but that's kind of the idea. And it would be a good bridge between Based on the True Stories and the other content on this channel that sometimes gets ignored by people who uh, are only here to see the Based on the True Stories. I am never going to focus on just Based on the True Stories because, well, I'm a historian and I can't. There's a lot of movies that have nothing to do with my historical work and I want to do that. So tell me what you think. If it's just too plain lazy to just rip out those sections and turn them into their own independent episodes? Or do you think that um, you'd like to see those things completely independent so that maybe teachers can use them or anything along those lines? I'm going to be here in Nevada for about another half a month or so and so I can't make anything new but then I'm going to have about a month to make a bunch of stuff before school starts up again and then I can't make anything, really. Sorry. <laughs> Hopefully that was all coherent. I don't know if it was. I'm just saying this right after coming back from VidCon. So, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Really? Come on. Cars and sirens, man. There's a bunch of them. Can't seem to catch a break. And now, for something completely different. And my parents one-eyed cat is just sitting here waiting for me. Just waiting for me to finish recording. Say hi, Julie.